This very well could be the franchise to end all franchises, so let's get started. So, Lord of the Rings, whenever it came out, it hit the culture like a crater. I feel like in a lot of ways, Lord of the Rings was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity whenever it came to franchises in particular. We had before, I think the most comparable thing would have been Star Wars, but... Star Wars did not have the singularity of vision that Lord of the Rings has. I don't think that the world is anywhere near as fleshed out, although the world building is awesome. Uh, but more than anything else, the Star Wars um, franchise, before Lord of the Rings came out, even whenever you get into the prequels, especially with the newer version, very scattershot. You really don't have it feeling like you're tied down with a singular mission of what is actually going on here. Great spectacle, but the singularity of vision is definitely missing from Star Wars, I would say. After it, you definitely get more franchises that follow the gargantuan world-building model. Things like Harry Potter, Marvel, Pirates of the Caribbean, even Dune, and I think Dune is coming the closest to what Lord of the Rings did. But again, you don't have the singularity of focus. Marvel, I think, is scattershot in terms of the tone, especially scattershot in terms of the actual object objective of what's going on with the plot. Pirates of the Caribbean, I think, might actually be the closest. You do have much more. Uh, I don't think it, they're they're fun. They're very fun. I don't think they are as you know as uh, deep as Lord of the Rings goes in terms of you know, the themes of what's going on. I don't think it actually connects on a deeper level with people. It's very, very fun, but it definitely, it doesn't have the depth, but it has the singularity of vision and also in terms of the actual narrative, you actually have something that you are always actively pushing forward to. Harry Potter, um, critically, is also a bit all over the place, more mostly good, but it is missing the, again, singularity of vision you get like through three it take your by the third movie you kind of have a picture of where it is that you're actually going but honestly the different like lord of the rings picks up kind of where harry potter is ending off lord of the rings puts like a microscope on that type of story like the war is basically here by the time lord of the rings starts and you have to really we're like we are on our journey we're almost a little too late to get our journey started whereas in harry potter there is a le level of okay what are we we got a we got a little dribble of what's going on with voldemort here a little dribble there and obviously it's not till after a goblet of fire that you're really off to the races in terms of what we're doing with this story the rest is good building blocks but lord of the rings doesn't have time for building blocks we got to go and that's what's great about lord of the rings that's what's great and i think the others don't really have it so much but i do think that dune might be doing it but then again it will because be because it has um, the immediacy in the narrative. It'll be, have the objectives. We'll have like a much more, I think, straightforward plot in terms of what it is that these main characters are actually trying to achieve. But Dune will also need to have what I think Lord of the Rings does best, which is the vision of the filmmaker. Peter Jackson, I think, in what he created with Lord of the Rings is so dense in how he packed this world out that it feels incredibly foolish to think of any other version of Lord of the Rings. We've got that Soviet Union version that came out, even the animated versions, even The Hobbit, really. Like, The Hobbit really only is great whenever it goes back into the Lord of the Rings territory that Peter Jackson did such a good job of establishing. And I think that the reason that, even well, even with the new Lord of the Rings show that's coming out, I think that was probably one of the biggest questions was, is this going to be the same world that we had before with Lord of the Rings? And so many things can be different. The way that things are filmed in terms of the scope, what is the score going to be like? Are we going to have the there, scores can seem like such a not so big a deal thing. But if you listen to a score of like a Batman movie from the 80s and then one from now, obviously there's differences because of time. But even just the styles are such such a difference when it comes to building a world and I think that with the new Lord of the Rings show that's coming out, people really want it to take place in the same universe that Peter Jackson created, which was so good that it's going to be difficult to do that. But it also just speaks to the power of how good Peter Jackson was whenever he created that universe in that way. I think he did it because he had the horror background, which I think is so important to bring to a story like Lord of the Rings. It's not obviously a horror story, but 
the way that a horror movie is able to instill fear so, so quickly, bringing that to something like Lord of the Rings, which is, it's not a horror story, but it requires you to be freaked out very often in order to propel itself forward. Um, Peter Jackson did a great job in his early career with splatter type horror, things like Bad Taste and Brain Dead, and then went on to more dramatic projects than that with things like Heavenly Creatures and Frighteners. It was an interesting road that Peter Jackson took to creating then eventually the Lord of the Rings movies. I'm, that's also why I'm kind of encouraged for the Lord of the Rings show. They have brought on J.A. Biona, who did the same type of thing. He's worked with things like The Orphanage, with horror, uh, The Impossible when it comes to thrills, Monster Calls whenever it comes to much deeper emotion. I think, they're getting, I think they're taking care of the new Lord of the Rings show. But I think Peter Jackson's clarity of vision and just the, the force to bring it to life so successfully is the thing that sets this apart from any other franchise i would say and i think it's the reason why it will be a surprise if we reach a franchise that does this again in our lifetimes because I, I don't even think it even happened before lord of the rings so i think it's quite obvious that i really like lord of the rings so what i'm going to do instead of you know taking you through every single movie i'm going to give the high and the low points of each movie so starting off with fellowship of the ring um the thing that i like most about fellowship of the ring is the sense of horror that you get in building the fear of the threat that you have when it comes to Sauron, whenever it comes to Mordor, whenever it actually comes to the ring and the power that it holds over everyone that it comes in contact with. Creating the fear of the ring, primarily with Gandalf, uh, is, I would say, my favorite thing about Fellowship. The way that he goes to find information about the ring at the beginning of the movie, whenever he leaves Frodo, and the way that you're kind of being shown the world of Middle Earth and how there is darkness growing in it slowly from Mordor is really, really frightening. And frightening in a way that I think speaks to what I was saying about how Peter Jackson was so good for this. It's not straight out horror, but it brings that element of fear that you need more so than just kind of speaking the danger. You being able to actually show how ugly and how terrifying this is on the faces of the actors and on just the actual worlds that you see whenever you're passing through these areas where you're seeing all these orcs and you're seeing all this death is done so very, very, very well. I think Fellowship does that in a great way without actually having to speak it. It goes so far without actually having to speak it. That is my absolute favorite thing with Fellowship of the Ring. Secondarily, though, the opening, particularly the additions that you get with the extended uh, additions are really really good i think that even the fact that we're getting this new show coming up uh it's it's exciting to see kind of the background that you get even more background you get with the extended editions because it does a really good job of giving you a portrait of where it is that in this thousands of years a portrait of thousands of years in a very very quick timeline it does exposition in a way that doesn't feel like you're getting through exposition it makes it exciting which exposition always the stupidest part of a story it is it is so difficult to do right it does it so well here low point on fellowship of the ring for me is aragorn and arwen again not to say that it's bad to me it it falls below the level of quality of the rest of the movie i feel like the in-depthness of their background that you get in the extended edition feels like the only part in the movie that is doing service for the super fans of the books and not actually benefiting the story. Now, I know, I know that there are lots and lots and lots of people that would say, well, this is here because ABC and one, two, three, and yada, 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 yada. And I do get that. What I am saying is that when watching Fellowship of the Ring, after so long of getting Aragorn and Arwen's story, it honestly feels like it goes below the line of interest in terms of how everything else is treated. I just don't think it does a good job in actually executing their story, at least not to the extent that it was in terms of executing the rest of the story. It really feels like things start to drag, and I don't think we need as much information as we got about them. Moving on to the two towers, again, I think the focus on this one, again, is horror. Really, really good, and, and effectively, the poisoning of the ring. Watching this one, I was really taken more with how disgusting the ring actually is in poisoning people, and particularly Gollum. I've always loved the character of Gollum, the way that someone is able, this is actually something that I like in, most of my favorite movies have this, someone who has, of their own accord, destroyed themselves by giving into something that is 
terrible, but they think either through a vice or thinking that they were doing the right thing, uh, but they end up going down the wrong path and they end up destroying themselves. I think those are kind of the most powerful stories. I feel like Gollum is one of the most archetypal characters in terms of that type of story because, yeah, the ring is that thing. It absolutely destroyed him. And I, I like, again, the nuance that you get in terms of even having some sympathy for Gollum, genuine sympathy, because he was the victim very much of a power that's the most powerful thing in the world. So to a degree, you can't fault him. But also, you see how evil he actually is and that he does actually have the will to change so that whenever he does actually become evil, it is very much still on him to have done those terrible things. And Sam and Frodo as well, the way that they are tempted throughout the story. And you really feel for Frodo and, and putting the two of them against Gollum on this journey. I, I love that dynamic. I really love that dynamic more than really anything else that's going on in the movie. In fact, I really, watching these movies again, I don't think I have any lows for The Two Towers. I know that one is kind of shed on, particularly even with the ending. I really, really like that movie. The way that Faramir even comes in, I, I think that that's an incredible uh, part of the two towers. Adds a whole whole other layer. Although I do think that Denethor eventually becomes a bit of a pain in the side of this franchise in the next movie. And then with Return of the King, I think that my favorite thing with Return of the King is the ending. I do, and, and by ending I mean kind of from whenever Aragorn charges saying, let's do this for Frodo until the actual ending. And the part that sticks with me the most for this, reaching back to Fellowship of the Ring, my favorite thing in watching it this time was in Fellowship of the Ring whenever Gandalf tells Frodo that Gollum Smeagol has not actually played his role yet. Pairing that with the regret of Bilbo to not actually destroy Gollum whenever he had the chance and how sympathy kind of overpowered him and how he always felt bad about how that had happened. And then seeing at the actual end of this movie how that ties through to the end to see that the ring probably wouldn't have been destroyed and Sauron more than likely would have won because Gollum needed to be there in order to actually push Frodo out of his stupor and fascination with the ring to then actually take it for himself and then that's the catalyst that then makes Frodo be able to see that he actually needs to not only destroy the ring, he needs to destroy Gollum in order to do that. And Gollum did have a role to play. And even though it's, again, it's it's so much it's so much nuance, but it doesn't even feel like nuance at the time of watching it because it's just fantastic storytelling. That's my favorite. The, the, everything with the ending is so good. Everything, it's, it's magnificent to see everything weave together so magically at the end of the movie. All of these stories connecting, doing so, so, so beautifully. But that in particular, the way that you see fate coming to pass, particularly with uh, Gollum at the end, and the way that fate has its kind of own role that it's playing, the way that there's something mysterious that is kind of playing a role in this movie, I think shines through most, for me at least in watching it this time, with, with Gollum. And then I love all of the endings, honestly. Whenever you've got them sailing away, whenever you've got Sam going to back home to the Shire, whenever you've got them all meeting again. I understand the joke, the editing is a little bit, maybe a little bit clunky when you're actually watching it in the theater way back when, but I think it works very, very, very well. The low for me on Return of the King, honestly, is Denethor. He, he is a pivotal character in the story. He serves the role well. He serves it, you know, good. It's still a good performance, but I don't feel the despair that actually leads him to his final demise. And because of that, his suicide for me comes across a little bit insincere and slightly funny. I'm not, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the point where he is running off of the side of his kingdom, I find slightly funny. And that is because I do get it. I get it on paper. Same with the Aragorn and Arwen thing. I do... I do understand what is going on here. He is mourning his sons. He is mourning the loss of his kingdom. He is essentially mourning the loss of the world, and he has no hope for it. So he ends up lunging himself off the side of his kingdom. He was even willing to accept that his son was dead when everyone else was saying, how could you not see that, in fact, he's alive? He's blind. He's completely blind. But I don't feel the actual despair of the character to the point that I can believe that he's actually jumping off of the side of his kingdom while... Uh, while lit up like a little tiki torch. I just, I that just didn't register as right for me. Honestly, other than that, I think absolutely perfect movie. Absolutely, I would say even still, these are all still great elements. There are just some that are lows, 
a lot that are highs. But this Lord of the Rings is Hollywood at its best. This is why I do not like whenever people denigrate Hollywood. Hollywood has the resources to create the greatest stories in the newest and greatest medium that we have. Yes, you can tell small stories, but they are not, they're never, never, never going to hit you in the gut with the powerful strength that you can whenever you have the full backing of Hollywood, at least for now. And Lord of the Rings, I think, is the best example of that. Leave your thoughts about Lord of the Rings in the comments. What are your favorite movies? What are your favorite parts? What are the parts that you feel fall a bit short? Just leave the comments below, and please subscribe to Nathan Velasquez here on YouTube for future updates on reviews and movie news. <laughs>